Uh, this morning as we um, began and opened up this message, we made reference to the Mo Urban Dictionary as to the meaning and the defining of the phrase man up. One of the definitions just simply said that this phrase man up means to fulfill your responsibilities as a man, despite your insecurities and constant ability to place yourself in embarrassing and unmanly scenarios, and I might add, situations. That's one of the definitions. Another definition just simply said it means to be strong or to take control of the situation or to rise to the moment or to the occasion. This phrase, man up, means to work through impediments and obstacles without whining. Have I got a witness? And then I left you with this last definition. Now, there are a whole bunch of them in the Ur Mo Urban Dictionary. It's online, but I couldn't quote all of it. All of the definitions, y'all. I got the cleanest one. Say amen. Some of y'all know the other definitions, but the last one said it just simply means to stop being a complete and utter wuss, or wuss, as some people pronounce it. Man up. Well, when I looked again, and as I may mention this morning, the very third phrase in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 16, the phrase that King James renders as quit you like men, literally means to behave like men or to act like men or to be brave like men. Essentially, it means to man up. Have I got a witness? I said to, uh, to us that when you look at this 13th verse, this verse is not written to women. It is written to men. However, when men uh, follow the admonition of this verse, everybody benefits. Wives will benefit when her man mans up. Women will benefit when single men man up. Children will benefit when their fathers man up. And a church will benefit when Christian brothers learn to man up. Do I have a witness? This is a challenge again to men. It's an important challenge to not only adult men, but young men as well. Have I got a witness? This is a word to boys and men, boys that will soon become men. It's a challenge to them to act like maturing men. Do I have a witness? And so the challenge as I lift it before us today to us brethren is simply to man up. Now, the reality is that, um, as I mentioned today, that that, that there is an assault being waged or launched against black men. Do I have a witness? We are missing from the homes. Our children aren't that very familiar with us. Have I got a witness? Because we, like dogs, know how to make babies but don't know how to take care of babies. I said, ain't too much different than a dog and a fella who will impregnate a sister and then not take care of the baby. Dogs can reproduce. Have I got a witness here? There's a challenge to us to rise to the occasion and to act like men. The phrase there, quit you like men, act like men, one translation says, be brave. But I told you this morning that I believe that this is more than just a call to bravery, but it's really a call to maturity. Do I have a witness? 
it, it is to, to, to mature up. And, and, and what's needed more than anything in the Christian home and the Christian church are for men to rise to the occasion. All too often, sadly to say, the backbone, the spiritual backbone in most of our families have not been men. It has been the women. Do I have a witness? Uh, a brother will sit on the couch on Sunday morning watching the football game while sending his wife and children on to church and saying stuff like, honey, pray for me. But that's not God's design. God expects men to be the spiritual leaders in their home. It ought to be you, my brother, who rustles the house up. Get up, everybody. We're going to worship the Lord. It ought to be you who leads the family in prayer. It ought to be you who say that let's go study the word of God. Let's read God's word. That is the responsibility of the man or the husband. Have I got a witness? We wonder why our homes are in trouble. It, the reason is men are missing. Priests are not the, the priest of the home has settled for being the pomper of the home. God expects you brothers and he expects me to be the spiritual leadership in my home. So the challenge, brothers, is man up. Have I got a witness? Young men need to man up. I mentioned this morning that, you know, I'm puzzled uh, by the fact that we got Christian young men who want to emulate the fashion of uh, the world, uh, engaging in fashion wear like sagging, not realizing the origin of sagging, have I got a witness? Sagging did not start uh, on uh, a Calvin Klein runway for male models. Have I got a witness? Sagging, uh, there is no such a department in the clothing store for saggers. Sagging finds its origin in the prison. I wish I had some help. I told you that some suggested that it got started as a result of inmates not have, being able or allowed to wear belts for fear of them using the belts as weapons against other prisoners. So the, what would happen is, of course, if your jeans or your pants are too big, you would sag. <laughs> have I got a witness? But there are others who suggest that the origin of sagging was that saggers uh, were giving witness of having, or rather belonging to another fella in jail or in prison. And that those who sagged, they did so, so that there might be easy access to the saggy. <laughs> I wish I had some help. And here we are, we're sagging. You, I mean, you know, if you was going to run from the popo, you can't run. not Because you can't keep your pants up. What we call a fashion statement was that which depicts that which is shameful. So I said to Christian young men and some of the older brethren, pull your pants up. And while I'm at it, Cut your hair. Come on, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong, you know, with a nice fade and a nice line. Ain't nothing wrong with a pair of slacks, some nice shoes, a nice shirt, and a tie. I wish I had some help. Ain't nothing wrong. Uh, with you uh, learning to talk proper when proper is needed. Yeah. 